Well, hey, folks, this is Fat Guy Flyers RC coming to you from the man cave. All right, I've had several requests for to do a video on this, and I'm going to show you how, uh, once you've installed a Lemon RX Stability, Stability 7 channel receiver, the Gen 2s, I'm going to show you um, how to set one up in the radio. Now, if you got this receiver, you need to mount it somewhere in the model where it is going with the length of the fuselage, not sideways, not upside down. I mean, you can do it upside down as long as it's going with the width or along the length of the fuselage. So either you're going to have the plugs towards the back or the plugs towards the front. But regardless, you're going to have it going with the width. Now, right now I've got the model plugged in. I've got everything where I want. I've got one aerial going down actually in the inlet and one going back that way they're at 90 degrees and if you hear here that bit that that model is actually waiting for me to bind you don't need a bind plug okay once you've got a mount where you want it right up there you may or may not be able to see it but right up there in the very top there's a button it's got to be on it hold that down start to flash that means it's searching for bind, just like the new Spectrum. So go to your receiver or your transmitter, put her in your bind function, bind. TSMX 22 milliseconds, telemetry. Okay. Complete. Now let's verify we got communication between the two. Aileron, elevator, rudder. All right. I've also got an afterburner, a KM model afterburner installed in this jet. Okay, so now I know that, that is set up. So I've got basic communication, right? I've got left, I've got up, I've got down, I got right, and I've got left. All right. Now you say, well, it's got a stabilizer. Yes, it does. Okay, I'm going to show you on the transmitter, when you got installed, you're going to have your Go to your, so don't worry, the model's not going to go anywhere, system set up, yeah, okay, go to channel of sign, okay, aux 1 for me is flaps, aux 2 is C, so that's my C button right there, right, okay, aux 3 is my knob, it's important to pay attention to aux 3 because that's where we're going to put our gains, alright, so we, I know that so I got C there, right? Okay, that's where my aux 2 is on C. Right there on C. Okay. All right. Now, what I'm looking for, if I pull that C down, I'm looking to see if anything changes. Okay. Okay, nothing's working on the... On the, on the gyros, okay? So that means we've got to turn the, uh, turn that on. All right, what I was looking for is with a transmitter on, there should be a red and a little orange light on when the stabilization's on. But only the red light was on, that means that stabilization is not active. I need to activate it. Now, what I'm gonna do is I've already taken my gear, my uh, flap channel out, and I've put a, a bind plug here in channel six. Okay, that's where my flap, where my flaps would be. Okay, put that in there, and now C button. This is B, C, and F. Okay, this is the B, this is the C button right here. B, C, F. Okay, so what I'm going to do is while I'm powering that on. I'm going to hold that down until all the LEDs flash for a few seconds, for about three seconds, and I'll release. And then your what you have, you have your R1, R2, and R3. I'm waiting to see when R, R3 and R1 and R2. Wait, wait, let me make sure. Real quick, let me make sure. I don't want to tell you the wrong thing. When R1 and R2 are, are R1 will, will blink for a little for three seconds, then R2 will blink for uh a few seconds and then I want R1 and R2 to blink together. When they blink together, I'm going to double tap that C button and that will turn on the stabilization. Okay? So R 
I'm going to go over that procedure again. I'm going to power the receiver on, okay? I'm going to hold while I'm holding down the C button at the same time, okay? Make sure you can see what I'm doing. All right, hold on. Let me tilt the camera here, okay? I'm going to hold the C button down while that's the C button right there. Hold that down, okay? I'm going to show you what's going to happen. I have to do this with my mouth. Okay, them all flash. Okay, that, that one's going to beep. And the next one's going to beep. Now see that two double ones? Now they're both on there. When those two single ones started beeping, then I double tapped it. Okay, now I can remove get those little pliers I can now remove the bind plug okay I'm going to unpower the receiver okay plug back in my uh, flaps back in there okay all right now now that's if your receiver when you start if you don't when you activate that that aux uh, 2 if you don't see the little red and a little orange this is the, the procedure we just did that's what you have to do so plug that in. All right. So I got my double buttons there, and I've got that. Okay. Oh, see, now look. Now, if you look close, see it's it's red. See, it's just single red now, and now there's orange. It's kind of hard to see with the camera the way these things flash with that effect. But look at this little light right here. If it wasn't, see it's red and orange, now it's just red, okay? That means stabilization is off, but now we, now stabilization is on. Okay, so real quick, let's go ahead and get everything situated in the battery, in, in the battery bay here. So I can show you how we can check and make sure the gyro is working correctly and everything. Now, as you can see, there's orange and and red. Now watch. See, I just changed to solid red. That's because I've programmed that seventh aux two on my uh, C, on the three position switch. So when it's up, the orange part's also lit. When this is down, it's just, it's just straight red, okay? So, let's back up the camera. What I'm looking for now is, all right, the orange is on, my stabilization's on, okay? So, what I wanna feel is that, ah, that aileron is not going up. Let me turn these gains all the way up. All right, that way. All right, now that aileron is going, when I lift up on this wing, this aileron should go towards me, but it's not. It's going away from me. Okay, so I gotta change that direction, okay? Okay, the elevator, as I go up, is pushing towards my hand, that's correct. And the rudder is also wrong. Okay, so there's a procedure for that. And it's not hard to do, and you don't have to unplug anything. We know my aileron and my rudder gyros are going the wrong way. Okay, G1 is aileron, G2 is elevator, G3 is rudder. I'm gonna show you what I'm talking about. And you have to do this twice because you have to do it for each um, part that's wrong, for each direction that's going, for each control service that's going the wrong direction. Okay, all right. What you're gonna do since you now you're you're gonna hold this is the C button. You're gonna let you're gonna hold it down until you see all them that whole row of LEDs flash for, for three seconds, then you're gonna release. And these green lights are gonna start flashing. The first one is aileron. When I see that, I'm gonna double tap that C, and that will tell the receiver to reverse the direction on the gyro. Okay? So we're gonna hold down the C. 
Okay. All right. Now, now it highlighted. See that 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 G that green on there. See that green is on there now. That very top. That's telling me that aileron has been reversed. Now I can tell you. Every time I push up on the elevator or up on the aileron, let's go in the right direction now. So we're going to proceed. Repeat that procedure again, and we're going to go until it gets to the third button. Okay. Hopefully you can see it now. Okay. Aileron is flashing. Elevator is flashing. Rudder is now flashing. Okay, that's the only control services you're going to mess with. All right. So. All right, so now, like I said, I've got the gains turned all the way up to make them over-exaggerated. So now that I reverse the direction on the ailerons, if I pull this wing up, this aileron should go towards me, and it does. We've already verified the elevator, but I'll just show it should go towards my hand, and it does. Now, if I move this plane this way, this rudder should push towards my hand, and it does. So now all of my control services, or the gyro is now working in the right sequence. Now, that AUX2 or AUX3, if you have a seven channel receiver, which is what we do, and you have at least seven channels on your transmitter, by default, that receiver, or this uh, uh, Lumen RX Gen 2, will automatically assign it to AUX3, uh, on your transmitter for me and I've got that assigned to that roller that roller right right there and I've got that turned all the way up to make these gains over exaggerate over um, compensate so if I turn it turn the roller all the way back down now there's like no compensation so if I go towards the middle there's a little bit of compensation okay so the I the, the advantage of that is if it's a dead day, there's no wind at all, you know, then you really could have them gains turned all the way down, okay? And as she fly along, she doesn't need much correct, much auto, much correction from the wind because there's very little wind. Now, if there's a lot of wind, okay, then you can on the fly turn that correction up because if you find you're flying along and the wind is and you're really getting rocked around. Turn your gains up a little bit on the gyro to help level that flight out a little bit. But as you, but you can tell if you've got too much. If she starts oscillating with speed, like you're in a speed dive or something, if she starts oscillating like this, back and forth like this, then you're going to turn them gains back down. You'll find that sweet spot, and that's why it's nice to have that on a roller because you can change it each day. Okay? Now, other than that... Nothing else is different when you're set up than any other receiver, okay? Um, this is strictly a good receiver for um, direct for uh, range. Excellent locked in. It's got it's got range. I've had these Gen 2 receivers pass range range test where a Spectrum receiver would not, okay? And um, so, anyways, yeah, um, the. Gen 2s just have excellent range, excellent locked in. They're not hard to set up, but we're going to go over that procedure one more time. We're going to talk, we're going to talk it out. Okay, you got your receiver plugged in the model. You got everything hooked. Everything works the way it's supposed to. You turn on the model, okay, and you have AUX2, AUX2 assigned to a switch. That way you can turn the gyro on and off. In this case, for me, I got assigned to C, box two assigned to C, and I can turn the gyro off. See, let me show you, the gyro's off. Nothing, right? Gyro's on. All right, so you know, but if you do that, and you've got a sign, and you plug it in, and you hit the bind button, same bind procedure as any other receiver. Hitting the bind button is the same as using a bind plug, okay? It works exactly the same, all right? And then you're thinking, well, I've got to sign that switch. Nothing's changing. I just there's no red light there. There's just a solid red light, but no the little orange light's not coming on to tell me stabilization. Okay. Then what you have to do is unplug your receiver, unplug channel six where you've got your flaps, 
Okay, plug in a bind plug to channel six. While you turn power back on the receiver, you have to hold down the C button, which is this button right here on the side. It says C on it. Okay, you're gonna hold that down. You're gonna wait for um, the six LEDs to flash for three seconds. Okay, then you're gonna release the C, the, the, uh, C button. And then you're gonna look for, you're gonna see little red lights. R1 is on the listed there. It's on the, on the instructions. R1 will flash for a few seconds. Then, then it'll move over to R2 and it'll flash for a few seconds. And then R2 and R, R2 and R3 will then flash together. When those two flash together, you double tap this, this uh, uh, C button. You double tap it real quick. And that locks in because R2 and R3 are the code for regular wing, okay? Now, if you had a different kind of wing, like say, um, let's go, let me go back. So I don't, don't, definitely don't have it. If you had a V-tail, when R2 flashed by itself the second time, you double tap out. If it was a delta wing with, ele with elevons, then when R1 flashed, you'd hit it and, and tap, double tap R1. But if you have a regular plane, you're going to wait for R1 and, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, you're going to wait for R1 and R2. I told you wrong. R1 flashes for elevons, R2 for a V-tail, and R1 and R2 flashing together, the double red. When that happens, that's for a conventional plane, conventional tail. You double tap that, and then that tells this receiver, this gyro receiver, that it is a conventional plane. Now, if you had... A dual aileron setup, you look for R1, R2, and R3 to flash, and you double tap it. If you had a dual aileron um, with a V-tail, then you'd have R2 and R3 to flash together. Okay, so let's go over it again one more time, because I told you wrong the first time. Unpower the receiver. Put a, Unplug your flaps. Put in a bind plug into channel 6 for your flaps. Okay? Hold down the C button at the same time as you power on the receiver. Plug in your battery, okay? The, the row of LEDs are gonna flash for three seconds. When that happens, release, and then you're gonna look for the appropriate wing type to start flashing. When R1 will be the first to flash, if that's what you want, you double tap it. If you want a V-tail, R2 will then flash, and then you'll double tap it. But if you're gonna have a regular plane you look for R1 and R2 to flash together. That'll be the third time. R1 will flash for three, R2 will flash for three seconds, and then R1 and R2 will flash together for three seconds. When that happens, you double tap that C button there, and that locks that R1, R2, or other words, the um, regular tells the receiver to lock in that that's the kind of wing we have. And then you release it, and then you plug back, and then uh, take your bind plug back out, plug in your uh, your flaps back in and then start your plane back up just like normal. Okay, then the procedure if you, when you, now that you know you've got your gyro working and if one of the control service, the way, you, like I said, the way you test a gyro, we'll go over it again, is if the, whatever surface you turn, it should turn towards the direction of the movement. Okay, so let me get where I can see the camera again. Okay, so again, test, and this is any gyro. If I pull this wing up, this aileron should push against my hand. It does. If I pull the elevator up, the elevator should push against my hand, against the direction you're moving it. If I go this way with the rudder, the rudder should push against my hand, and it does. And that way I know that all my control service, the gyro is working in the correct direction. If it is not, you don't have to plug anything on, anything in. You just leave your receiver the way it is. Again, the same procedure as before. Hold down the C button, wait for the six LEDs to flash for three seconds. Release them. Your first green button is going to flash for just a second, and that's your aileron. If, it, if it's the aileron that is going the wrong way, double tap the aileron, and, it, and then that tells the, the, the gyro, the receiver, to, hey, switch the ailerons. Make, them, make the gyro work the other direction, okay? And then, you, and then they say, well, yeah, but I also had uh, the elevator, okay? Well, then let it go back through its, you know, fire it back up again. 
hold the C button down, let all six of the LEDs fire or, or flash for three seconds, release it, let the first green button will flash, which is ailerons, let it go by, and then the second green button down the row will start flashing. That's your elevator. So you double tap it there to lock in that elevator. And then the same procedure for rudder. Okay, hope I'm not making this clear as mud, but it's once you do it a few times, and, and if you follow the instructions online, which I'll put a link to the instructions for this in the, in the uh, video for this, if you just follow it exactly as it says and take it, don't read anything more into it. Just do exactly what it tells you. Don't try to think. Don't overthink it. Just do exactly what it tells you, and you won't have any problem. My problem, I said, well, that can't, you know, I try well, well, let's try it. And the next thing I know, I screwed up the receiver and blah, blah, blah. You can factory reset. If you get it out of whack and you can't figure it out and you think you've screwed it up, you can factory reset this receiver to back like it was when it came out of the box. Okay, I'll, sh I'll tell you what that procedure is real quick. Now, that's only if you just absolutely, you've got it all screwed up and you have no idea what you did wrong and you just want to start over. Okay, all right. Now, it's actually not hard to do. Um, but you're going to want to rebind your airplane. You're going to start completely over. Okay. Factory reset. What you're going to do, you're going to, while the receiver on, you're going to hold down that, that bind button that's up here and the F button that's down here. You're going to leave that C alone. You're going to hold them down at the same time. The, all the lights on the receiver is now going to flash for, for a few seconds. Uh, then, then when that happens, press the C button briefly. Okay, the C button, the one in the middle, the ones you weren't touching, and then that will reset it. Take your bind, you know, make sure you don't have a bind, and you're going to completely start over. You're going to rebind it and start completely over. But that will bring that back to a factory reset. That again is the bind button, the B, and the F button, which is the one we haven't talked about. As for setting a fail safe, which I don't do that. Okay. You hold them down at the same time, all the lights will flash, you release that, and then you hold down the C button, uh, the C button, and that will factory reset it, unplug it, rebind, start over. Okay, like I say, but I will also put a link to these uh, instructions to go with the receiver, because it will not come with it. You'll just get the receiver, you get, this is what I got in the mail when I got this, a brand new receiver. Here's what I got in the mail in a little box. Okay, I got this, it comes with a, with a uh, little pad, comes with a bind plug, and it comes with a, a telemetry cable. This is for power, which I don't ever use that, um, which I don't even know how to use it, to be honest with you. Okay. All right. Now let's talk about what we've done with this model. If you have any questions about this, please put them in the comments. I'll do my best to answer, but I'm telling you the instructions that I will include completely um, cover it. I learned it the hard way. Trial and error took me hours to try to figure it out because I kept reading into it. I, if you just do it exactly as it says in the instructions, you won't have a problem. Okay? Just do it like it says. Now, what we've done with this model is, number one, I've carved out a whole lot of, of the space out of, this, out of the canopy here. Because these Vipers, just like the E-Flight, there's no tourists for not having enough room for anything. Um, put a little wooden shelf in here to put my receiver in there. Now that now my canopy fits nice in there right there. I've also, because I can see, now I can tell that all my everything's working the way it's supposed to. I've also installed a KM afterburner. Okay, turn the frog on. That actually turned blue and purple, which I love it. And something this model's got. It's got thrust reverse. <laughs> and it, it came with it. The little yellow plug that came off the uh, off the uh, tram, off the servo lead for the uh, throttle. The little yellow plug I put, and this because this is the seven channel, I plug that into my seventh channel over there. Assign it to the same switch as the gyro. And what it is, when I got thrust reverse on, okay, when I'm in thrust reverse, the gyro's off. Well, I'm landed anyways, I don't need the gyro. And with normal running, normal cruising, thrust reverse is off, and my gyro's on. I only need the gyro when I'm flying. They don't really 
really need it. This plane really doesn't need a gyro, but I want to show you how to set this up anyways. So, all right. And I'll, just to show you what I've got on this model as far as rates and everything. Um, for high, rate. high rates, I got 95 over 30. Mid rate. For mid rates, 80 over 30. Low and rate. for low, 65 over 30. High Which rate. for this one, I fly in high rates. Okay. To show you my flat mix, okay, which I don't even think I have a flat mix on here. Yeah, I do. Okay, for for landing flaps or t flaps up negative 100 percent for takeoff flaps, Take uh, negative 50 percent, and then for landing positive 10 percent with a positive 10 percent down elevator mix. So let me show you what that looks like from your standpoint there. Okay. Obviously flaps up. Take off flaps. Take off. Landing flaps. Landing flaps. Okay, if you look at the elevator, take off flaps. You may flaps not be able to tell, but it's just a little it goes down just a little bit with the uh, landing flaps. Alrighty. I've also got these black patches on here are to put I've glued them on because of the paint um, for easy lights. Okay. All right, folks. Well, thank you so much. That's just the features I've done on the uh, new uh, F the FMS Viper 15 year edition. I've showed you how to uh, set up the uh, Limit RX Gen 2, and we've talked about um, how you reset it and and uh, just basically my my take on this re on these receivers. There, this is a thirty three dollar receiver. Okay. The comparable receiver to this, the closest I would say to this, would be um, without self-level, okay? None of, the, none of the Lemon RXs have self-level, so don't count for that. But the closest I would say to this would be an AR631 with a single long antenna because it's got forward programming and it's basically, but it's got six channels, not seven, so I wouldn't be able to use the thrust reversing uh, function. And... Uh, so you'd have to have an eight channel receiver, I guess, really for spectrum to get close. And that's like a $129 receiver. Well, these seven channel Lemon RXs, this was only $33, okay? 33 bucks at Motion RC. And I'll, I'll put it up against spectrum, unless you gotta have safe self level, unless you gotta have that. And if all you need is AS3X and a good solid signal, these Lemon RXs are the way to go. Another one that doesn't have safe, that is even cheaper. It doesn't, doesn't have any kind of safe. It doesn't have any kind of uh, gyro at all. Is the Gen 2 Lemon RX 7 channel that doesn't have stabilizer. Now that you don't have any kind of gyro or anything like that, but this will be comparable to say your AR620, which is a six-channel spectrum. It all, this also has the bind but, or Biden button on it. And it's got the two double antennas, and I like again. I've had these past range tests where Spectrum receivers did not, and I love these. And these at Motion RC are seventeen ninety nine, and they're ten, and they're all Spectrum protocol. So anything that you need that calls for a Spectrum, you can use Lemon Lemon RX Gen twos. The Lemon the Gen ones were crap. I'm sorry, but they were. These Gen twos, they went through and they realized, hey, we got to step our game up. These are locked in. These are great. I stand by the Lemon RX receivers, the Gen 2s. I love them. Well, folks, that's my rant, and that's how I set up the, uh, the uh, seven channel Lemon RX Gen 2 with a stabilizer. Thank you for watching. God bless y'all. And don't forget, faith, family, and friends, and the jets, and stabilizers, Lemon RX, all that good stuff. Bye bye.